everybody. I uh, think we're going to we have enough people here to uh, actually have a meeting. So thank you all for coming out. This is uh, definitely really exciting. Um, I have some some introductory statements I wanted to, to read through before uh, we transition it over to our engineers. We'll go through uh, some of the other program. But it is encouraging to see this number here. You're not going to be sitting in the seats forever. The idea is to run through a quick, quick PowerPoint presentation and then migrate up here to the tables to actually collect comments on each specific location. Uh, again, thank you all for coming this evening. I'm Mike Burns, Transportation Planner and Staff to the Nantucket Planning and Economic Development Commission. I'm here uh, representing the town uh, with uh, the town's engineering consultants, Patricia Donegan and Steve Rhodes. Uh, we are here at this public presentation and work session uh, to collect public input on the concept redesign of three locations, three intersections. These are the top three priority intersections for the town of Nantucket. I will discuss the history and VHB will discuss the need, the attributes of roundabouts, the project locations, the conditions, and then we'll talk about the conceptual improvements. Then we'll, be, uh, we'll evolve into work sessions at all three locations to collect the input in three different cycles, rotating every 20 minutes or so to ensure everyone has a chance to comment on each location. After about an hour or so, uh, we will then summarize the comments received as part of a wrap up before 8 p.m. We're gonna try to keep this to a, a two hour meeting. Uh, <laughs> there will be uh, uh, another session later on in June uh, that event will be advertised and uh, intended to uh, present refinements to these concepts based on the, uh, this evening's input. And we'll inform the, the preliminary design for each location, uh, which will again be part of a public outreach effort later on this calendar year. As far as previous work in these three areas, uh, we are initially uh, identified as a planning concern as part of the Mid-Island Area Plan process completed 15 years ago in 2003. Uh, the, these intersections uh, were then studied as part of a roadway network analysis uh, in a subsequent Mid-Island Area traffic study completed in 2005. This effort quantified traffic volumes, crashes, vehicle conflicts and safety for all users, as well as identify possible solutions that could be acceptable to the community. All three locations were characterized as having substandard level of service. They were inefficient, contributed to delays and lines of queuing that detracted from the character of the island and convenience for users. There were conflicts for bicyclists and pedestrians that could be improved. There were turning movements for freight vehicles that were difficult, awkward, conflicted with other users that also could be improved. All three could be made safer, more convenient uh, for all users and abilities and in keeping with the character of the island. And with the experience of improved safety, efficiency, and added charm at the previously hectic intersection of Sparks Avenue at Hooper Farm Road with the construction of a roundabout, uh, noting specifically that there are 15 crashes four years prior to that intersection improvement and two crashes in the four years after it was built, it is apparent that your roundabout is appropriate configuration and acceptable by this community. As we all know, traffic signals are not acceptable. So this is, the, uh, this is the compromise. To verify that other configurations could provide the desired outcomes, alternative analysis for these three locations continued into 2006 and into the present day. Alternatives for four corners were developed in 2008 prior to and contributed to the planning discussions and then refined as part of the hospital redevelopment project. This latest effort is a product of that planning and approval process. Bartlett Road at Surfside Road intersection had continued evaluation from the 2005 study to an alternatives analysis completed in 2010 following documentation of a cluster of crashes and then progressed into implementation with the recent town meeting approval and acquisition of property necessary to construct the towns and the planning commission's preferred alternative, which is a roundabout. Fairgrounds Road and Old South Road progressed from the study in 2005 to town meeting funding of design for the roundabout in 2015 and was then reevaluated in 2017 as part of the Old South Road Corridor study to confirm that the configuration continued to operate at an acceptable level of service and safety considering the other developments occurring in the area now and into the future. With that, 
let's talk need and review the concepts before breaking out into the work sessions. Uh, so Patricia, if you would, please. I need you good. Here. I'm not used to working with the microphone, so I might break out in a little song if that's okay. I'm just gonna... My name is Trish Domigan. Um, I work at the transportation consulting firm of BHB, just to give you a little bit of history. I'm the director of municipal services for Massachusetts. Um, I'm here with Steve Rhodes, who's the project manager for this project, to help right now with developing concepts for these locations. Um, what we're showing you tonight is just a little bit of background, why, the, why the town considered um, the use of roundabouts, but also what the need is, what the, the crash um, requirements are, you know, the conflicts that we're trying to avoid with these types of, of, of designs. Um, one of the things that I want to point out to you is nothing is set in stone or pavement, as someone pointed out to me just yet. We're, we're developing things. We, we love your input. We want to get your input on any of the concepts that are presented tonight. So with that, Um, Mike gave you a lot of information on the history. This is going back over a decade, you know, over 15 years, essentially, that we close to it. Um, and, you know, the bottom line is what, what the, the, the town is trying to achieve is to reduce congestion at the, these locations. You know, there's a lot of backup, especially during the summer months, seasonal, that, you know, there's huge queues, there's huge delays at these locations. And, and what they, through all of the traffic studies that have been completed over the last several years, it, it seems to conclude that a roundabout would be the most efficient way of actually processing traffic through these intersections without many um, conflict points and improve the safety of these locations. I know people debate back and forth what that means, but I'll just give you a little bit of, of um, what the industry is showing as demonstrated based on research of what the reduction in conflict points or accidents are with roundabouts. Um, the town has adopted a complete streets policy. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, a lot of communities are very reluctant to do so, but what that means is that all of the corridors that improvements are going to happen on is going to be multimodal. What that means is not only vehicular. You know, a lot of a lot of roadways are just I like to call them vehicular centric, right? So they're always focusing on cars and not necessarily the other users of of the roadway themselves, the pedestrians or the cyclists. And with a complete streets policy. Policy. Not only do you um, try to balance the needs and the uses of the roadway corridors, but you're also introducing transit and making it a more livable space, making it so that people do want to walk or people do want to actually use these corridors more so than just driving through. Um, ADA compliant, for the, that, that's a really fancy, fancy sentence, the last one. And, and what that means is what we're trying to do is make the sidewalk so that they're universally accessible, um, so that there's no longer gaps within where the sidewalk starts and where the sidewalk, the, you know, it, there's a gap in between and then where another sidewalk starts up. So I think that's what the goals or the, the project needs are uh, for these projects. So specifically, those are global, specifically what we're looking at are specific crosswalk pedestrian crossing locations where crosswalk should be where it's safe to, to cross over either at the intersections or near the intersections. Um, as much as possible, try to achieve bike accommodation. Try to allow for that complete streets policy to be achieved. Um, have cyclists not on the street, but maybe off the street just adjacent to it. Things like that that we're considering. Um, off the streets, third bullet. Also reduce conflict points. So there's a lot of locations, especially with um, intersections, signalized intersections, but I heard that's a dirty word here, so I, I won't even bring it up, where there may be conflicts between, you know, the different users of, of the roadway, of the, the corridor system. You know, there, there might be a pedestrian um, crash with a vehicle. We, we're, we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to improve the condition at all of these three locations. And also, we want to make sure that we maintain the character of Nantucket. You have a very special place here. You really do. It's beautiful. We don't want to put up signals and, and widen the pavement out so that there's, you know, dedicated lanes for everything if we possibly can kind of think of different ways or creative ways to achieve the goals of the project. So Mike had mentioned through the, the years of, of studies that it seemed like the most efficient way of actually processing traffic and, 
and um, the, uh, completing a complete streets policy is with the use of roundabouts. Um, that has been discussed through, there was a 2005-2016, there's, there's been a number of traffic studies that always point to a roundabout. Um, the reason why is, you know, there's, there's a series, and, and I can go into statistics if you want. I would prefer not to because we're trying to maintain uh, or contain this to a, a two-hour meeting. But um, a, a roundabout is, is really perceived as a, a much safer um, intersection than a, a, a full intersection, a four-way stop or a signalized intersection. The reason why is, you know, just, just what it says there, it, it introduces more of a, a traffic calming measure, something that actually slows traffic down. They have to actually maneuver around the curves instead of, you know, stopping and going. And in doing that, they're actually more aware of their environment. So they actually see when pedestrians are coming up to the crosswalk location to cross through or cross onto um, the roundabout itself. Um, it's also, what it says here is reduce conflict points. And I'll, I'll show you a diagram that actually shows that in a minute. Uh, the pedestrian safety, just what I saw, just what I had mentioned, people are actually more aware of their surroundings. People are, in cars are slowing down as they're going into the roundabout itself. They're aware that a pedestrian is actually getting to the, the crosswalk to cross over um, the intersection. The other thing is there's, there's a narrower or a shorter crossing width on the pavement. Um, if you really think about it, and I'll show you again a diagram, if a, a pedestrian is just crossing over one lane of traffic instead of two lanes of traffic or four lanes of traffic, something like that, it takes a lot less time to do so. And people can actually get to refuge areas a little bit faster and be out of the way of, of vehicles that are going through the intersection itself. Um, they're low maintenance. You know, if you had a, I know it's a dirty word, and I apologize again, but if you had a traffic signal, just think about it. There's a lot of equipment there. There's a lot of things that would have to get upgraded. Um, if you had, um, you know, the, the, the lights, the, the mast arms, things like that. At a roundabout, you can install it, and it's just like a roadway. It's just going to wear the same way. You can actually make it a lot of function and be very aesthetically pleasing with landscaping, which is one of the last things here. Um, the capacity of Itself. If you really think about it, if you have a stock control, a three-way or four-way stock control intersection, people are actually stacked up behind the stop um, sign and the stop line, right? Because everyone has to stop, wait for the other folks at the intersection to go, and then move ahead, which actually slows down traffic through the intersection. Whereas a roundabout, you can actually merge and yield into the roundabout itself. Does that make sense? Come on, work with me. Thank you, thank you. So these are just two diagrams for a four lane, for a four lane roundabout. Which one's that? A four approach, where is a, a, a four approach intersection, and all these dots represent areas where. Um, there could be conflicts between all of the movements and the, the different symbols, the, the circles are vehicle conflicts. And you can see because everything's funneled through a roundabout in a more organized fashion, there's a lot less, 24 less conflict points that could occur with a roundabout. Um, there's also a lot less uh, pedestrian conflicts because people aren't going along each approach to cross over an, an intersection, whereas here, it's just like I said, it's going across one lane of traffic, stopping at the, um, the Splitter Island, as they call it, and then crossing over that, the other lane of traffic. Um, we wanted to actually create something that showed a three-way also. So this is actually showing all the conflict points, again, um, where people can actually have crashes or accidents. Um, whereas at an intersection itself, even if it's stop control, there's more potential for accidents than at a roundabout. <coughs> Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Steve. Thank you. So again, just to look at the project locations, so I'll quickly summarize what we're talking about and then get into some more specific details about each location. We have Old South at Fairgrounds Road, Surfside at Bartlett, and Four Corners right out the door here. 
surface at a Bartlett, each uh, road is about 22 feet wide paved. We have the elementary school located right adjacent to the project site, so that's a big consideration for this as we go through the design. There's the existing shared use paths on both roadways, which serve as the bike and pedestrian combinations here. There's no sidewalk existing on the east side of the roadway. And there's a number of consolidated driveways in close proximity to the intersection on the east side of Surfside. There's also existing um, transit routes, bus routes through here. There's a stop just to the north, I believe, of Bacchus Lane. And so that's another element that we'll consider when we design the improvements to the intersection. Here's some photos on the ground. This is taken on Bartlett looking towards Surfside. You can see the new elementary school building there in the background. And then this is a great illustration of the, all the users of the corridor. We have the vehicles and the bikers using the path approaching the intersection. And they're about to have to make a stop control and you know perform a, a crossing of a pretty busy location. Jumping up to four corners. Most of the roads are about 22 feet wide. Um, Atlantic Ave is about 20 feet wide, I believe. So similar pavement widths. Pedestrian accommodations, there's sidewalks on most legs with the exception of this leg here. And again, um, one bus route through the corridor and there's actually a bus stop right on the Atlantic Ave at South Prospect Street corner. Some more photos of traffic, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Looking down Sparks Ave. And then looking down towards Surfside. And our final location, Old South at Fairgrounds. Again, we see the shared use paths serving as the pedestrian and bike bicycle accommodations on the east side of Old South and on the south side of Fairground Road. Pavement width is again pretty consistent, 22 feet wide. And once again, there's a bus route to this area. And I believe the stop is right about here in this location. Looking down Old South. And looking from Fairgrounds towards Old South Route. Again, we capture some bikers in this. Good, good representation of who's using the, the intersection. I just want to take a quick look at some of the features of the concept plans. These are the same plans that we've displayed on the tables tonight. Uh, we're happy to talk in more detail as we get into the breakout sessions, but I just want to touch on a few of the points of each location and then we can move on from there. So Surfside at Bartlett, we have a fairly large shift of the center of the intersection proposed here. Uh, one of the benefits of this is that we can repurpose a lot of existing pavement into a landscape opportunity and that will just partner with the standard landscaping and art display opportunities that you can have in the center islands of the roundabouts. So this is a pretty exciting location with the, the possibilities that we have to, to work with here. We have maintaining the shared use paths on the west side of the roadway and the south side of Bartlett and crossing locations identified for Bartlett the existing crossing location um, of Surfside, and again, towards the lower uh, portion of the project limits the crossing location, the second crossing of Surfside. For Four Corners, we're, we brought two alternatives to look at tonight. This one is, a, they're both modified roundabouts, um, but they, they work, their intent is to fit the specific layout of, of this intersection. It's a very, as you know, unique intersection. So this one is providing two circles to provide the, the turning areas around the intersection. And we have crossing locations on Sparks Ave, we're proposing a crossing here on Surfside, but we may be able to utilize the existing crossing down here at, at Vesper. And then another crossing of South Prospect and of Ave. <coughs> this would add a sidewalk on this corner of Atlantic and, and South Prospect. And of course, the, the elm tree, we don't want to come anywhere near that. So we've highlighted that in the plan. Similar element with this second alternative, the, the elm tree is, is safe. 
Mr. Mayor, may I make a quick point? I want to thank you for indicating the large box. I want to thank you for indicating the elm tree as a large box and not as a point as a trunk, uh, because the elm tree to be protected is not just not cutting the trunk down, but it is protecting the area which feeds that elm tree. So thank you for indicating that as a larger elm. You're welcome. In this version, of, in this alternative, we have a larger circle uh, on the southern side of the intersection. And this just gives a little bit more room to provide some more enhanced uh, pedestrian accommodations of the crossings down here. Um, both versions have their their you know advantages over the other, but we just want to start talking about each one tonight and, and see what we can what knowledge we can get from, from you with your on the ground um, knowledge. The pedestrian crossing on Sparks. The pedestrian crossing on Sparks will be right here. I asked a couple of questions that apply to all of these before we break into smaller groups. Sure. Uh, yeah. I doubt that I'll need that. I learned for it's all. <laughs> it's actually for the case. That's kids. fine. Um, have you, or any of you, or anybody done any surveys or analysis of how many kids use Four Corners and Bartlett Surfside? At this point, we've got over 800 kids right in these two buildings. And I think it's up over 700 down at the other two now. And I'm interested in knowing whether there have been any studies of how many kids will be using these intersections. Mike, could I ask you to talk to us through that a little bit? Sure. Uh, yeah, we do have data counts on the uh, intersection, uh, pedestrian use at the intersection yeah. for bicyclists and, and for pedestrians. Uh, so I didn't see that in any of the stuff published on the town website. Okay. Um, that, I'd like to see it. It, it, it definitely will be rolled out. Uh, VHB, who's our engineer, has to produce what's called a functional design report. Right now, we're just doing very conceptual designs. Yeah. We do have those numbers, and the engineers are using those numbers. Uh, the reports that they're provi uh, developing will be shared to the public when they're finalized. Out. My second question? Second question. Well, um, I did see in your literature, or somebody's literature, mm -hmm. and it was mentioned again tonight, that rolling vehicles see pedestrians better. What is your evidence for that? It, it, it seems counterintuitive to me. Um, I don't disagree. It does seem counterintuitive. Sorry, just getting to the diagram. Let's do this one. So when you have a roundabout and there's a yield control here, vehicles have to yield to the pedestrian. It's a state law, right? And it's just known that when vehicles yield to a, 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 a crosswalk here, they're going to slow down. They're slowing down anyway. The whole idea of a roundabout is to slow traffic down. When people, vehicles are at an intersection, it is, it's a traffic calming measure. It's actually, it's known that it's a traffic calming measure. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm you have to a, use the microphone so the cable can. I'm having a hard time with this because how can slowing down be better than stopping? Yeah. Yeah. So, I know, I'm not, I'm not getting That's okay. Um, so if you're stopping, you're actually looking at everyone moving and all of the different moving movements at the intersection right so when you're stopping at a stop sign just think about this you're looking at traffic here you're looking at traffic here you may not see the pedestrian especially if you're concerned with children because there's so many other movements that are going on at the intersection so what this does is it actually funnels everyone just one location you don't have to look to see you're looking over here but you're not looking at all the other movements in the intersection as you're traveling through 
you know, if you're at a, a four-way stop, you're waiting for all the other people to stop, and you're a little suspicious, at least I am, when you're at a four-way stop, that people are actually going to go in a, in a clockwise manner, right? You're, you're not quite sure. And then if you introduce, so you're looking at three other approaches plus whatever pedestrians are coming in. So you're looking at a lot of different things from a, a driver's perspective. I, I actually see what you're saying. Yeah, so the, at this, what you're seeing is just one movement. You're just seeing for the person that's crossing over that one travel lane instead of trying to absorb all of the information that's happening at the intersection. Um, should we take questions now, or do you want to we'll wrap up? Okay. We'll wrap up this, this session. Sure. We'll talk about what we want to get out of our breakout groups, and then the questions that people have can actually be addressed to these specific locations, and I think that's probably the most viable unless, way of doing this. Unless there's general uh, questions for all three. Um, let's, let's go ahead and uh, maybe just show the, 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 the information that we want to share uh, with, sure. with, uh, at, at the workout session. And, uh, but I can... I can refute those photographs. Okay. The rotary, the rotaries we had, the other morning there were 23 cars on Cooper Fox. Just, just one second, please. Please, 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 please. The other morning there were 23 cars on Cooper Farm Road. Yep. When he had to stop sign to go into the road. Right. Uh, about a week and a half ago, the cars were backed up at the uh, house on the to West Creek Road. Right. And then later on that afternoon, I was going to the lobby yard, and the traffic was at to the bus driveway right. going through the road. Right. I'm not I'm saying the roadways work. No, no. What I'm saying is they have a bigger capacity to facilitate traffic. I'm not well, saying that it, all the traffic is going to go, go away because it, it won't. It, you know, if you really think about it, there's vehicles that are on the island. There's vehicles using the roadways. My, what we're trying to do is better process them through the intersections themselves. My, my concern is, and my point is, my big point is, town meeting, uh, town elections, yep. newcomers came in for the first time. Just, it didn't matter who they were against, they were against the incumbents. I think all the articles passed except for Mike's roundabouts. And, had, and, and everything had crazy money attached to it. Even the, But the people don't want the roundabouts. And they're, I, they're just sick of, um, they're tired of not being represented. Go. We're going to break out into the, the oh, section of this. Slides. Yeah. Right. I don't understand what slide. Why, why don't we go ahead? And, I think this is probably the, the healthiest approach. Is we break out in our sessions. We're going to go to a specific location. If you have a question about generalities, that's really the best opportunity. We have markers set up. We really want to document what the concerns are. That's really the, the best opportunity to have questions like this addressed. Is in, in that in that arena. I didn't understand yeah. what the diagrams. Sure, sure. Then that, that can all be explained here. So we'll have uh, uh, Patricia, if you could, just to summarize what, what we want to get out of the breakout sessions, and we'll actually do that. We're at the, the limit of our PowerPoint presentation. We'll have an hour, one hour devoted to these breakout sessions, and then we'll summarize them in the last half hour. So what we're looking for, you know, obviously if you have specific concerns at each of these locations, we do want to mark them up. Um, um, especially desire lines, any of the, the crossings of the roadways, if there's a, a if there's a new location or if there's a different location than what is shown on the plan, we really want to hear from you on that. Um, if you can just wait a minute, that would be great. I just have a quick question. So the only thing you're discussing is the existence of the roundabouts. No, what, what we're discussing is any of the concerns that may be at each of these individual locations, and then if it, a roundabout is applied to it, what you see as issues with that. Okay. And then specifically, uh, the, the crossing locations, if there's desire lines, if there's you know locations where folks will want to cross the street, um, any bike accommodations, if you see that, you know, something that's shown on the plan, we need to do uh, is shift the, the bike accommodations to the left or to the right. That would be really important to know. Um, any of the aesthetics, 
what you want to see um, in terms of landscape features or locations. Any of the driveway locations, you know, especially at Surfside, at Bartlett, there's driveway locations that were going to be going fairly close to the intersection. What, what specifically are some ideas that you may have on relocating those driveways or how to, to handle those? And also any of the challenges, like I said, any of the issues that you see at these specific locations, um, it would be really helpful for us to go back to the drawing board to see, you know, if the concerns that have been identified tonight we can address or at least respond to um, with the next public hearing or the public meeting. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. With that, uh, I'm sure each of you may have your favorite location. Uh, with the idea is that you visit all three. Uh, our programs will be set up to where we'll have 20 minutes at each location. If you want to stay at that location, you're free to stay at that location. If after the 20 minutes you want to migrate over and see what the heck is going on at Four Corners, go over and see what's happening at Four Corners. After 20 minutes, go see what's happening at Old South Road and Fairgrounds Road. That'll be the program for about an hour. And uh, we'll document everything that we, we collect, uh, the comments that are, that are received. And then uh, the last 30 minutes, we'll just go over all and uh, share that with the rest of the group. And if there's Q&A after that point, we can have a little bit of a session, but here we'll try to wrap this up for the school at about eight o'clock so keep this to about a two hour program and this is such a great turnout um that we only put six chairs per table so this is a bring your own chair party <laughs> all right so with that feel free to come on and drink yes, everybody. Everybody. so anybody feel comfortable this one's fairgrounds <laughs> this is surfside apartment right? this is four, four corners, corners i'm sorry and that's surfside apartment <laughs> Surfside Road and Barlow Road intersection. Uh, I'm going to just summarize the comments that, that I received, uh, just to let you all know what was documented here. Uh, these will go back and we'll evaluate these for, and to see which ones would be best practice, which actually would be safer, and the virtues and and uh, the, the, uh, the drawbacks of, of each comment, and then come back and we can present this again. And again, the next meeting later on in June uh, to see uh, you can tell us what we heard and what we didn't hear. Uh, that said, again, we're at Barley Road and Surfside Road. Uh, the, there was general consensus that the traffic with the new elementary school is better going around the, the elementary school. That functions uh, so much better, uh, a lot of people say. If there was a traffic circle, we have a comment that perhaps a tree should be added to the center island of the circle uh, for shading and aesthetic reasons. Uh, we also had a comment that overhead lighting was a concern uh, to, for, for some of the neighbors, the residential abutters of the intersection, and that the, the intersection should not have overhead lighting. Uh, so a lot of these improvements have aprons going around the, uh, the center islands, or is the island, the Belgian block, and that could be a noisy element to have, a, a noisy material. Uh, Barlow Road, there was also a suggestion that to make that intersection, these are alternatives to a roundabout, uh, to make the intersection function better, uh, prohibit left-hand turns out of Barlow Road onto Surfside Road, right-hand turn only. Uh, there was a, uh, other options for opening up Friendship Lane or Cato Lane uh, to reduce traffic, uh, even opening up Bacchus Lane uh, to, friend, to First Way as, a, as an option to help spread out the traffic. Uh, there was a comment that a three-way stop would work better uh, instead of uh, some of the uh, reduced conflicts that we would depend on our driver courtesy, that we all know the Nantucket wave to, to signal the guy to go on through. I can uh, maintain that driver courtesy. Uh, that option would be much cheaper than a roundabout, and there's no arguing that. Uh, the stopped traffic at a three-way stop is definitely better than the slower 10-mile-an-hour traffic. Um, and there was a comment that, that I, I think they're just not some 
folks, just don't buy into the, uh, the reduced conflict, uh, improved safety uh, that we try to uh, suggest that our logic uh, suggested that it makes a, a safer environment. Uh, there, we haven't presented any statistics with any of these options. Uh, there was uh, an ask that we provide pedestrian crash data uh, and, and queuing and delay data for each one of these options. Uh, that really wasn't the format for, for this. Right now, we didn't want to overwhelm anyone with statistics, so we didn't provide that, but uh, we can definitely provide that at the, the next forum. Uh, we did have positivity about the roundabout, that a roundabout is greater than a three-way stop uh, for a number of different reasons. And uh, stop signs, prior to the crossings. Uh, that's actually something for the schools. If there's anybody here from the schools, that's something to consider uh, for the crosswalk on Bartlett Road, having a stop sign prior to the crosswalk and then have a yield condition before you actually enter the circle. Uh, that's actually not a bad idea. Um, I think that's pretty much all that I have. Um, there were some sideline concerns, but I think we ironed those out. Uh, the speed taking some of these curves uh, was a concern that maybe it's not necessarily can happen at the 10 miles an hour that we suggested that happen this intersection that's much faster than that so we'll have to verify that some way to see what is the maximum speed uh, that I, I would say safe but I would think you would lose control after a certain mile an hour but we'll verify what that condition is and explain and try to articulate that at the next forum that's what I have for the elementary school intersection uh, uh, Steve's going to talk about the comments that he collected for the two options on four corners so let's see thanks Mike so I'm going to go over some of the general observations I heard. I, a lot of people left comments that I wasn't able to speak to, so I'm sorry that I wasn't able to speak to you personally, uh, but we'll definitely read all of them and give more feedback at the next time. So in, in general, there's a lot of comments on the prior alternatives uh, that were analyzed at this location, and I think as everyone knows, there's pages of alternatives now. So we spoke a little bit about that and about some of the um, thoughts and some of the, the different scenarios that go into those other alternatives just in general. Uh, the, let's see, the Elm was a big topic. Uh, protection, a uh, great comment I got was to make sure that the root zone is not a staging area during construction, uh, which is a very good comment. Um, one suggestion that you possibly plant some young elm trees in uh, the center circle if there's space that allows that. And it's, a, it's a good comment as well. Truck routes um, from Sparks to South Prospect. Uh, major trucks go through this area. That was talked about quite a bit. Um, something we'll definitely keep in mind. A lot of the roads coming out of this area, Vesper Lane, South Prospect, um, Williams Lane, were talked about, and potential for things to look at, um, just considering the overall impact of traffic in this area. What are drivers doing when they have to turn left on the surf side from Vesper? Is this you know, obviously it's a difficult turn. Uh, is there anything that can be done to improve that? Speeds on South Prospect Street, uh, sight distance on South Prospect as you're coming around that last corner and approaching uh, Surfside and Atlantic. Just a lot of good, good comments that we can, we can take on. So thank you. I was a little lonely over here. Thank you very much for the folks that swung by. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't actually stat it. I appreciate your input. It was great. It was great. And I just want to show you one comment because I think it's awesome. I don't know if you can see this, but it says, I dig it. This looks awesome. I'm just, I'm just saying. So we got a lot of comments. We got a lot of comments about um, what the configuration of the roundabout is in terms of where the splitter islands were and whether or not they would be flush. Um, there was some comments about. Well, there were a lot of comments on the, the function of the millstone roundabout. Is that milestone, milestone roundabout and how that actually um, the traffic queued back into this location, so this location would not function properly because of the the queuing that occurred at that location, and then there was a lot of. Um, experience from today that was talked about. Um, the sight lines along the roundabout is very important to make sure that people can see through it. Uh, the bike path was talked about, especially that the, the areas where the bike path would be crossing over the roadway, not necessarily at the roundabout, but where the bike path would be crossing over the roadway to make sure that people are clear on who has the right of way going through those intersections. Um, I just got a, a comment about if there's a roundabout put at this location that 
maybe the driveway to the plus building the plus building could be opened and into the the roundabout itself and the reason for that is because the left turn that goes into the current driveway is, is a pretty difficult movement and also the driveway entrance into the parking lot is really narrow it's difficult to maneuver Did I get that um, that was that was about what we talked about was there anything else guys that we wanted to talk that was about all here? The <laughs> no, no, that's not true. I talked about the queuing and how this wouldn't function if the, the millstone roundabout was a milestone. I'm sorry. I don't know why. And it's, okay, and it's rotary. A rotary. A rotary. And that's a rotary. You got it. We have a lot of conversation about roundabouts versus rotaries. Thank you very much. You want this? I, I would actually do, but. No. <laughs> um, okay, so then a few uh, other things, by the way. No, I think, ma'am, you know, yeah, one, Trish. one thing, Trish, I, I, I'm an old school guy, say ma'am, still. Um, you were really good when you explained the, um, the, the, the natural flow of, of a roundabout. The, the biggest issue that we have here, I think, is when we first put that roundabout in that we, 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago now, there was a lot of negativity about it. Some of the people are no longer with us that were really adamantly opposed to that. And now everybody takes Newtown Road as a shortcut to get to it, okay? That's just a fact. If Mike put one of those little things down, count the traffic on Newtown Road versus 10 years ago, I guarantee you it is a lot more. And that isn't just because there's more cars. If everybody takes a left in the winter, because you can get to town faster by taking a left on Newtown for fairgrounds to go to that roundabout. So when people say it doesn't work, why are they all taking the taking a shortcut? End of story. Okay? Thank you. So what I wanted to say to you, Steve, and well, I guess it's both of you, you do definitely need to kind of slip back into the circle <coughs> idea, in my opinion, and talk to staff about the buildings at the hospital to get everything exactly factual as far as the arrangements that we've made with the hospital when the new construction started, what we did to secure some easements and some different things. So that's very important because that's all been done and Andrew can answer all those questions. Um, but as far as education, we did really well. I think that that's the biggest issue is that these are an old thing. 75 years ago, they've been doing this in Europe. It works. Cars can travel through it, whether it's busy or slow, night. Nobody has to sit there and wave at somebody and then look at the next person and look at the next person and figure out where they're going when there's only four cars there. That's what happens all day long. And everybody knows that that's true. They might not want to either admit it or just they just don't want the roundabout. That's fine if that's what your opinion is. But you can't say they don't work better than a four-way stop. This. Thank you. Are you dropping the mic? No. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> And were there any other uh, comments that anybody had? If not, I want to thank the participation. Uh, there will be a meeting later on in the latter part of June to uh, incorporate some of the comments that we have here. And I encourage you, those will be advertised. Uh, hopefully, we'll use the Board of Selectmen, we'll use social media, uh, excuse me, the select board, we we'll use social media uh, to, to get the word out. I, I trip over that all the time, and I apologize for it. Uh, so, uh, hope you all can attend that event as well. And uh, again, thank you all for, for coming in and uh, safe walking or driving home. Uh, we'll see you in a month. Thank Have you very night. much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.